Welcome. It's episode two the WFISD <laughs> Sports Zone. I am Scott Halfley, Athletic Director for Wichita Falls ISD, and I'm excited to bring you this week's special. Uh, this is the fastest growing YouTube program on uh, the internet, I believe, last week. Uh, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, we had 5,000 viewers? Uh, no. <laughs> but we have more entertaining guests this week. Okay, we'll, we'll, call it, we'll call it 500 <laughs> viewers and we'll get started. So this week we're talking everything that is middle school girls athletics. And so I've got two of our campus coordinators here. I've got Shanika Williams from Kirby Middle School, Kristen Carroll from Barwise Middle School. Welcome guys, thanks for joining me on the show this week. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you bet. Uh, a quick shout out. Coach Stegall is our women's coordinator at McNeil. She could not be here. So we are all things Kirby and Bar Wise today. Coach Carroll, let's just start with you. Tell all of our thousands of viewers, how many years have you been coaching? Uh, this is my 11th, 12th year. I started with Zendy and Zendy and Bar Wise merged. And so I've been there ever since the merger. OK. And during that time, what all sports have you been involved with? Volleyball, basketball, and track every year. Okay, and what is your favorite <laughs> sport to coach? I would say volleyball, but I didn't enjoy track in the beginning, but it, it's actually started to grow on me over mm -hmm. the last few years. So Now, you've got, a, you've got a past with the sport of volleyball. Yes. Right? Tell everybody where you went to high school. I went to Ryder High School. I graduated in 2001. Okay. And I was the middle blocker. Um, coach Van Geem and Coach Wolf were my coaches, which – Coach Van Geem is not in WFIST anymore, and Coach Wolf uh, finished her career in Winthorst. Okay. Yeah. And then when you graduated from Ryder, where did you go to college? I played volleyball at Vernon College. I actually lived in the big city of Vernon. Okay. And then after that, I finished at MSU. All right. Fantastic. Well, and you, you finished at MSU, and I believe that's where you met your husband. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about your family. So uh, I'm married to John Carroll. He actually went to Old High, was a part of a really good football team there. He played football at MSU, and we just kind of met in different circles, and he was kind of annoying at <laughs> first. So um, right. But he grew on me, and here we are, married 10 years, two kids later. He was, he was persistent. Yes. I find <laughs> most, most men who outkick their coverage are persistent. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and... Uh, you guys have got two kids. He's a fireman in town, is that yes, correct? Yes, he's a fireman. Awesome. Well, shout out to all of our first responders. <laughs> Coach Williams, how long have you been coaching at Kirby? Um, at Kirby, I've been there two years. This will be my second year. This is your second year at Kirby. And also, the sports that you're coaching? Uh, that would be volleyball, basketball, and track and field as well. Okay. And what is your favorite sport that you coach? Basketball. She's a, ba she's a basketball player. So, <laughs> yes. And you also graduated from? Old High. Old High. Know. What year did you graduate? 2004. Of oh, course, right. you already know what it is. <laughs> um, and then where did you go to college? Um, University of North Texas in Denton. Okay. And you, you played college sports as well, correct? Mm -hmm. I ran track and field. All right. And what events did you run and compete in? I competed in the long jump and triple jump. Long jump and triple jump. And what was your best long jump and best triple jump? Best long jump was maybe a 1910. Best triple jump. Let's just say I jumped out the pit. Out the pit. <laughs> Sounds good to me. We're going to take her at her word. Out the pit. Yeah. All right. Well, Coach Carroll, tell us. Uh, I don't think a lot of, of our viewers know exactly what all goes into a typical day in the life of a middle school coach. So just take us through a typical day coaching volleyball right now at Barwise Middle School. Well, so I'm up at 5 a.m. because I'm getting to Barwise at 6 a.m. Uh, today, for example, my husband was at the station, and when he's coming home, we get help from our family. So my mom was at my house at 545, so I could get to Barwise at 6 o'clock. Um, our practices start at 630, but I like a little time just to make sure I have all my ducks in a row, my practice plan. I also teach PE, so I get all my goals and objectives done there. Um, we're here at 6 a.m. We start practice at 630. They break for breakfast, and then the athletic period starts. We make announcements for what's going on. Um, Off-season groups split after we do our warm-ups um, and stretching. And then we go through the period, and then it's time for seventh grade. And those seventh grade babies are still trying to learn that routine, so it's still very much a slower process for the second period. <laughs> And then I go right into PE after that. I don't have conference till seventh period, so I start at six o'clock, and I don't sit down till about two fifteen. Okay. And then what happens? Uh, 
On the girls' side, is, is, are all the volleyball practices before school, or do you come back after school? Our sixth grade, or excuse me, our eighth graders do morning practice because they have the first mm -hmm. period athletics, so it can just go into that first period. Our seventh mm -hmm. graders come after school okay. until 4:30. So you're not you're not done at three o'clock. No, you're, you're still coaching. No, Coach Abubakar um, takes care of seventh grade uh, volleyball, but I do stay a few minutes to make sure she has everything she needs, and so I'm usually leaving 3:30 or four. Now, does that schedule, does that stay pretty much the same during basketball season? Basketball, we're competing for the gym space because the boys are also mm -hmm. using the gym. So all morning practices or all girls have morning practices mm -hmm. in basketball. Tell everybody, because, you know, we've got a few viewers who probably have been to Barwise Middle School, but talk about the gyms. We, we've, we have <laughs> challenges here with space in Wichita Falls ISD. Tell everybody what that, when you say you're competing for gym space, exactly what that means. So we have one competition gym, it's our big gym, mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a, it's not even really a half gym, and it just got a new floor. Before then, we called it an ice skating rink because it was very <laughs> slippery, nails sticking out. Um, we had several kids injure themselves, and they, we fin uh, finally replaced it. You can have a basketball practice in that upstairs gym, but it's not, like, the court is not accurate, so you can do some drills, but you really need that main court to really, you know, show them like game-like situations. Okay. So girls have the morning and then boys have the afternoon and that way we're not having to make weird schedules and work around just the one gym. It, it makes it. for less conflict. We will take turns with the seventh or eighth graders starting upstairs like during morning practice and then during the period they have the main gym to themselves. All right, so we've got sometimes as many as three girls basketball teams, three boys basketball teams, all competing over space and basically a gym mm -hmm. and a half yes, is yes. what we're dealing with. And I, Coach Williams, you deal with a lot of the same things at Kirby where we have the, the smaller back Pretty gym. The same problem. <laughs> you're, and you're, you also got a new gym floor this year. How does the Brand new gym floor look? New. Beautiful. Great. Marvelous. It, it's amazing. I love it. So, so Coach Williams, you know, shifting gears to talk about something different with you. Tell us, you know, who was a mentor or an influence in your life that made you want to be a coach? Um, first and foremost, I would start with Coach Deborah McNeese. She's amazing. Got to follow her up with Coach Joe Golding, who took me up under his wing. That's an amazing dude right there. And Coach Golding just retired. Just, just retired. Just I'm so proud of that man. He's, he's awesome. He taught me a lot of life lessons. Coach Deborah Gonzalez, she's amazing. Um, one of the first mentors I had was at Kirby. I am in her office currently. Her name was Rosalind Floyd. She is me. She's who I emulate also. She took me under her wing at Kirby in that very same office that I sit in today. And she started mentoring me from there. And from there I start being more conscious of the decisions I make as a person. So she's awesome. So you've, you've named off several excellent coaches that are either retired from or still working and uh, coaching in WFISD. So I think that's a, that's a great list of mentors. Mm -hmm. Last year, uh, you got to participate in a statewide program through the Texas High School Coaches Association called The Rock. Yes. So you were selected for the inaugural class. Tell our viewers what The Rock is. Um, it's a program for up and coming coaches who are trying to get their foot in the door. Um, it's the way that they want us to begin networking, if you will. Um, it's a program designed to give us the tools, the necessities, the knowledge, and just the skill set that we need to become better coaches so that we stay in the field or in the profession of coaching longer. Um, it's not easy having doors opened as a coach. Right. So it just puts you in a, kind of give you a really good benefit of putting you in a position to succeed as a coach. If you need something, they give you the resource to go find that thing. So it's just resourceful. They're now you were assigned a, a mentor for the program. Yes, Tell Tierney everybody. Knight. Say that again. Tierney Knight. Okay, and where does she coach at? She is in Garland. She's in Garland She's ISD. In Garland Which ISD. school? Um, she, Centennial. Centen yes. Okay. Centennial. She's the head uh, coordinator, a girls coordinator at Centennial High School. Okay. She's amazing. So when you went amazing. to the Rock, that was a it was a two day workshop mm -hmm. where you were, not only were you assigned a mentor, you got to listen to coaches from some around of, the state. Some of the greats. Uh, you got uh, you got to meet Joe Martin and Glenn West of the mm -hmm. Texas High School Coaches Association, two great high school football coaches and now leaders of uh, the largest organization of coaches in the United the States. Yeah, yes, sir. So tell us just tell us about that experience of of being able to listen to coaches who you know they're to, you know, they've got 20 plus years of experience and, and what are some of the things they shared with you? What are some things that you brought back from that? Um, a lot, I brought a lot back with me. And to be honest, my experience was 
It was shaky at first. I felt like I didn't deserve to be there after they gave their speeches and spills about being in the coaching industry and having titles for over 20 years. And then coaches that followed them had a good 15 years with also a lot of work experience. Me being one year in as a coordinator, I felt like I was underprivileged. I wasn't ready to be on the same platform as Joe Martin and Glenn West. That's how I felt, honestly. But they pulled, us, they pulled each of us aside and they talked to us and said, this is how you start. We start at the same place you started. Let us be a stepping stone so that we can get you to where we're at. So now that they gave us that that assurance, I'm I'm blessed. Like Well, you I came you now. came home from the from the conference and immediately came to see me and we sat down and talked about it and you immediately wanted to do something. Tell everybody yes. what we did or what you did. I want to implement changes. Um, I want to start a mentoring program so that the girls can see people of their same color in different positions of power. Um, you don't have to let your situation be your circumstance. I, I realized that. Um, I want them to start looking outside of coaches, looking outside of the school. I want them to start gravitating towards things that interest them. Um, I don't want to put limits on them. So, yes, I do want to implement um, a mentoring program with people throughout the community so that these girls have different avenues to reach out to. Um, also, I want to do better, like I said, with holding myself more accountable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do feel like, oh, my gosh, this is a lot. I'm taking on too much. But after speaking with Joe and Glenn, that is my job. Building relationships, that is your job. Winning games, that's a bonus. That, that just looks good on paper. But your job is to build relationships, to create positive individuals who will grow up and then come back later and thank those coaches that I just thanked. I don't want to tell my age, but about 20 years later. <laughs> so that's my role. I think, that, I think that's fantastic. You know, I, I don't think that – I don't know that everyone realizes the amount of work that coaches put in. Um, it's a it's it's a thankless job most of the time, mm -hmm. and then if the scoreboard doesn't reflect what your fan base wants to see, it's definitely not a. They're not right. thanking you for that; they're blaming you for it. Yes. So there's a lot that goes into it. But you know that's the next thing, and I think I want both of you to take a turn and kind of talk to us about this. Tell us some of the things you deal with, not not coaching point guards or middle blockers, but what are some of the the uh, things that you see middle school girls facing that you have to mentor them on how to deal with and how to work through? Social media. Yep. Social media. It's, it's cruel. I, I tell them all the time that, you know, I feel for them because we didn't have to deal with that mm -mm. growing up. And mm -hmm. people don't realize how hurtful they can be. And girls take it very personal. And it to them, it seems very just devastating and how do I come past this to something to us that we might be well that's not really a big deal but to them it is and it's just everywhere everybody sees it they're embarrassed um, you know and I it's hard to tell them how to navigate that because I never had to learn to navigate right. that yeah. that's great coach Lewis, with you on that one, coach social media is tough for the kids mm -hmm. what's something else that you that you talk to your girls about other than social media that they're dealing with right now as a, as a middle school athlete the females just personal perception of themselves yes. um, they want to be what they see on TV like you said the media is, it plays a big role they want to fit into a certain category a certain group the cool kids and sometimes that comes off as bullying or lashing out or it comes off in different ways so that's my biggest objective at Kirby right now just dealing with the self-perception of, of a, a young girl and how to tell them you're beautiful mm -hmm. without acting that way you're smart without having to do this you may not be the best athlete. Let's keep working for it. Don't stop working. Let's just work harder. So that's my biggest thing right now is just perception of, well, I'm at Kirby, so I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be this. Or I'm from Linwood, so I'm not going to go to college. I'm from Eastside, so I'm never going to get out of here. That's, that, we gotta, that's my job is to change that perception, change so that mindset. You're not just developing players. You're developing self-confidence. Yes. You're, 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 teaching the, you're yes. teaching our girls to believe in themselves. Yes to not read and listen to and believe in social media yes, and, and all the different pressures that they feel from that. I think, I think that's fantastic. We're lucky to have both of you working with our girls. Uh, so let's, let's switch gears. Coach Carroll, when you're not arriving at school at 6 a.m. and you've made it home, what do, what do you and your family like to do to unwind and have fun together? So my oldest son, Jeter, he is eight. He loves art. He loves comics. He loves Carol family movie night. Okay. And he loves popcorn, so that's easy. Um, so we do like to eat dinner at the table together, and then we try to do either, if it's not a Carol movie night, 
My youngest one is always wanting to go, go, go. He have a little wagon for him. Jeter will get on his scooter. We just like to be together. Got it. I love it. Coach Williams, what about you? When, um, when you finally get to take the coaching hat off. Um, I do a lot of chilling and self-reflecting. I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy, honestly. Um, <laughs> yeah, I am. Mom I'm has lazy. dinner ready, so when I get home, I get to eat dinner and watch TV. I get to catch up on Lifetime Movie Network, which is addicting, by the way. I don't know if you've watched it. <laughs> no, I do not watch, watch the <laughs> Lifetime Movie amazing. Network. But you need time to decompress. Yeah, that's exactly correct. That yes. is exactly what I'll call it, decompress. Okay. To just kind of go over my day, and then anything that I feel I didn't do better, okay, now I got I to gotta hit it tomorrow. I got to get on it tomorrow. I can't slack on tomorrow. Okay. So I just like to relax. And then, Shanika, one other person that I think you've gotten to meet, uh, Dr. Susan Elza. Oh, that's my so, girl. So, do <laughs> so Dr. Elza and I go way back, but tell our viewers who Dr. Susan Elza is. Well, you should probably tell. I just met her, and then I had to do my research and figure out I was talking to one of the greatest I was talking to a legend and didn't even know it, but that's a part of the rock. I mean, mm -hmm. you meet people, um, title or no title. I mean, they approach you the same, they encourage you the same, uh, they keep in touch the same. She reached out to me on the first day of school and was like, have a great year. You yep. need me, call me. But Dr. Susan Elza, she is the president of the UIL. She's, so, she's the UIL athletic uh, director, director and the first female to hold that position in the history of the University Interscholastic League. So. She and she, uh, she says what she means. Dep There's she no does. sugar coat with Susan. She does. And I love the directness, and I love the way she's approached uh, handling the UILs. They've done a great job of yes. opening up that organization. Mm -hmm. um, I, there was a real negative connotation of the UIL in the, in the eyes of our coaches around the state before she took over. But there's been a increase in transparency and. You getting to meet her, and I, I, you know, I've got Susan Elza stories. We're not going to tell them today. They're great yes. stories, but I'm not going to embarrass my girl. So mm -mm. she's she's amazing. But she is she she's is awesome. awesome. I did not know yeah, that she reached out to on the first day of school, but it doesn't surprise yes, me. Yes, so that's so. Just, that's more motivation. Very yeah. very cool. More motivation. All right, so guys, we we have a tradition here. When we wrap up the show, we do a thing we call the Blitz. So. The Blitz is me asking you as many questions as I can, as fast as I can, and you have to answer. And we're going to go until someone laughs or we run out of questions. Oh, Coach Williams, like you're up first. <laughs> Favorite color? Blue. Favorite band? I don't have one. Favorite food? M&M's. Favorite song? I don't know. Oh, that was easy. I that was know. easy. Oh, my. <laughs> that was the fourth question. That's all you got? It was quick. I'm not that fast. I'm old. My brain don't do yeah, like it used to. You're three years <laughs> younger than Coach Carroll, who's fixing to step up to okay, the mic. I didn't mean that like that. No, 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 Coach Van Geem and Coach Van Hemert. Favorite high school coach. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you just said same. <laughs> Least favorite high school subject. Uh, math. Favorite professional athlete. Ooh, that's a hard one. Uh, Derek Jeter. What's your birthday? October 8th. What's your anniversary? February 19th. Would you rather fight a thousand angry crickets or one rabid weenie dog? <laughs> one rabid weenie dog. <laughs> Would you rather shave yourself bald or not brush your teeth for six months? Bald. Would you rather eat bugs for one year or roadkill for one day? Bugs for a year. What is your mom's first name? Brenda. What advice would you give your 18-year-old self? You have no idea what's in store for you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Favorite song? Uh, water for me. Favorite food? Nachos. Favorite band? That's a hard one. I don't think I have one. Favorite athletic director? Uh, Coach Scott Halfley. Woo! We're done. Oh. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coach Carroll was cool, calm, yes, I gotta, and I, did that awesome yeah. job, man. That's awesome. <laughs>